Hi, hello and welcome to another video by the scientist formerly known as Nigeli. In this project I would like to show you how to convert a digital signal from a DS3231 real-time clock module into an analog format using mathematics, especially trigonometric functions like sine or cosine, and provide you the code for the Arduino. So let's start from what it's made of. As usual, something has to be from soda cans in my project. So here I made a cover for my clock. And if you would like to know how it's done, please follow the link in the upper right corner. So the first thing is the real-time clock module, the DS3231 real-time clock. And you see I just removed some of the pin headers and added two cables for easy connection to the Pro Mini. Then the next element is the Pro Mini. It runs on 3.3 volts and 8 megahertz. Uh, the only thing special here I added two pin headers to the A4 and A5 analog inputs. Then I used a Nokia 5110 LCD display uh, in this project because it runs on 3.3 volt. We need also a battery holder and a lithium-ion cell 18650 rechargeable one. All the components are mounted on a breadboard with 400 holes, this white one. And then I used also this smaller one with 170 holes, the yellow one. And on the reverse side of the breadboard we see the battery management system together with the switch. Initially we remove one power rail from the 400 hole breadboard uh, to make this a uh, very compact device. The small yellow uh, breadboard is uh, glued on top of the white one and is uh, for the Nokia display. The first component that we put on the breadboard is the Pro Mini. And all the components are now connected with jumper cables according to the shown schematic. The battery holder is glued uh, onto the side of the breadboard. Uh, with the help of a hot glue gun. This is basically the reason why I used two breadboards onto each other, because here we have a bigger surface mount to uh, fix the battery holder. The battery management system is uh, glued with hot glue to the reverse side of the breadboard. The cables from the battery management system are fixed with the hot glue as well. The cables from the battery holder are then uh, soldered to the cables from the battery management system. Two header pins are soldered to the battery management system to connect the power rail on the front side of the device. Add the Nokia display to the yellow breadboard. And at the end, the real-time clock module is connected to the power rail and the two cables are connected to analog input A4 and 5 of the Arduino Pro Mini. Now the battery can be added into the holder 
and then you can start loading your battery via the battery management system first time. Then connect your Arduino to the computer the first time to adjust time within the real-time clock module. After having adjusted time within the real-time clock, you are ready to upload the code for the analog clock version 7. Now we come to the second part of this video where I would like to show you how to calculate uh, these uh, clock hands in the code. The clock hands can be drawn in various shapes. The simplest clock hand version is by just combining two points with a line. That's what you can see in the upper left position. Using three points, the clock hands look like arrows, that's the lower one. But the form I like best is the form with four points. And uh, the next step in this video uh, is about how to calculate these four points to make this clock hand. So now the question is how to translate the digital signal that we have into a drawing showing time in an analog version like here. Uh, the general idea is that uh, the LCD display uh, with its uh, 84 to uh, 48 uh, pixels is our Cartesian coordinate system. A Cartesian coordinate system is a coordinate system that specifies each point uniquely in a plane uh, by a set of numerical coordinates, which are the de designed distance to the point from two fixed perpendicular oriented lines measured in the same length. Each reference line is called a coordinate axis of the system. So here we have an axis here. I made a picture. Um, you see here uh, the display and this is the x-axis and here we have the y-axis and with coordinates we can describe every point on the display and that's what we are going to use to draw our clock hand. So I made another picture to explain you how to draw these clock hands um, we have on this uh, picture here the y-axis of the Nokia 5110 displayed with or here we have the numbers from 0 to 47 and here the x-axis from 0 to uh, 83 and uh, in here we would like to draw this clock like we have it here and indicated in different colors uh, we have the minute clock hand and the hour clock hand. And to draw such a clock hand, we need to describe four points. One, two, three, four. And these four points have to be then uh, connected with a function called draw function, which is uh, within the library that I used here. And um, so as soon as we have described these four points, we can use the draw function and then um, draw our clock hands. So the next point would be uh, how to calculate these single points to then connect them. So I made you another drawing um, to explain how to calculate the clock hand. So again, we have the y-axis here, the x-axis here, and um, the blue rhombus is our clock hand that we would like to draw. So we need the point here, 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 and then connect everything. So the first point we would like to calculate is this one here. So to you calculate this point, we use a trigonometric function. I have included the drawing here and especially the sine function, 
which is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So I included a rectangular triangle connecting the lower point and the two o'clock points, and that's our hypotenuse here. And that's the opposite, and that's the adjacent. Here we have the acute angle alpha, and that's something that we can calculate because the clock hand is moving, the angle is according to the time we get from the real-time clock. So first um, we use here the sinus alpha function, then x1, the opposite, uh, divided by the hypotenuse, is here indicated as x1 divided by um, our hand end. We will need this length also for other calculation and therefore the longest one is here called end and therefore our hand end. And then we solve this equation um, to receive x1 is sinus alpha times our hand end. And the same we do for uh, the adjacent, that's what we here need, uh, here, need here. Um, we see that we can use the cosinus function. So adjacent divided by hypotenuse, exactly the same thing, just that we use here uh, minus due to the orientation within our coordinate system. So it's um, minus the cosinus alpha minus, equal y1 divided by hypotenuse. And then we solve the equation according to um, y1. So first of all, we have the coordinates, or we know how to co calculate the coordinates for x1 and y1, um, starting from here, the clock center point. So the next uh, slide or paper, however you may call it, is how to calculate. So first we calculated the first point, this one, x1, y1. Now we would like to calculate this one. So the calculation is the same. We use again the sinus and the minus cosinus function. Um, but the length of the hypotenuse is different. So we are not taking the entire length to here, but only to here. Here you see indicated again the rectangular triangle. And um, therefore we have like sinus alpha equal x2 divided by our hand start. This is called start, this is called end. We calculated this point, this one, and now we focus on those two. Um, so the third point here, um, I indicated again the rectangular triangle with uh, these uh, dotted lines. And um, you see it's uh, pretty much the same. We use again sinus function, cosinus function. The hypotenuse, the length here, is also again different, so it's not the entire length to here, and it's also not the one at the start, it's in the middle somewhere, therefore I call it our hand uh, middle. Um, but we have to here add an angle, that's this one here, in indicated with a capital A letter. So before we use that acute angle alpha here, but for the calculation of this point, uh, we need to add this angle. And therefore, the expression is now sinus alpha plus a, within brackets, is equal x3 divided by the hypotenuse for this case here. Now we come to the last point. We calculated this one, this one, this one. Now we have uh, we talk about x4, y4. Uh, what's different to the previous step, you see it here. Instead of um, adding this uh, angle with the capital A, we subtract it here. 
So it's sinus alpha minus a in brackets equal x4 divided by the hypotenuse. So that's the difference to the previous step. And these coordinates x4 and y4 is of course always in relation to the clock center point. So now um, I have described how to calculate these four points. Um, and now we can go to the program and see how it's translated in the Arduino code. So I opened up uh, the program in the uh, development area. Um, you see here we have uh, our version 7 of the analog clock. The initial part is some description, so I can remember what I did here. Then you see the library that we included. Uh, then you see here the object, the real-time clock module. Um, then we have here the clock centers uh, defined. And then when scrolling to the loop, you see that the loop goes through two functions, the draw minute and the draw hour function. So, and when we go now directly to the draw minute function, you see that Again, like I showed you in the slides, we have these coordinates, the angle, then the computer asks, or the real-time clock is asked to deliver the time, and then the minute is uh, multiplied with six, because one minute is uh, six degrees on the clock face, and that's our angle that we need for calculation. And you see here below, the angle is included, the sinus function, 25 is the hypotenuse, so a long one for the minute clock hand. And here you see um, this 0.0175 figure. That comes from the problem that neither Excel nor Arduino can calculate with degrees. So you have to transfer all values to radians. And that's done by dividing P divided by 180. And this results in this um, strange figure here, 0.0175. And then these are the calculations as I, as I showed you before. Um, you see they differ like that's the end of the hypotenuse, that's the start. Then four middle ones, uh, for two are we adding the angle and two are we subtract subtracting the angle. And basically that's it. And these coordinates thereafter are um, added to the clock center points, that's this long expression here. And uh, we use uh, the function for draw line between these points and that's generating us our clock hand. And the same with when we go further is here um, for the draw hours function. And if you manage to listen to my talk about calculating clock hands until here without falling asleep, you are really my hero. So if you are interested for more stuff, please check out all my videos and subscribe to my channel. Stay creative and so long.